wikivd.com. Interscope Records Interscope Records is an American record label. An imprint of Interscope Geffen A&M Records. Its parent company is Universal Music Group, a subsidiary of Vivendi S.A. Interscope was founded in 1990 by Jimmy Iovine and Ted Field as a $20 million joint venture with Warner Music Group's Atlantic Records. At the time, it differed from most record companies by giving decision-making authority to its A&R staff and allowing artists and producers complete creative control. It had its first hit records less than a year after it was founded and achieved profitability in 1993. Iovine served as chairman and CEO until May 2014, when he was succeeded by John Januck. In 1992, Interscope acquired the exclusive rights to market and distribute the hardcore rap label Death Row Records, whose artists included rappers Tupac Shakur, Drive, Dre, and Snoop Dogg, at the center of the mid-90s gangster rap controversy. As a result, Time Warner, the former owner of WMG, severed ties with Interscope by selling its 50% stake back to Field and Iovine for $115 million in 1995. In 1996, 50% of the label was acquired by the MCA Music Entertainment Group for a reported $200 million. Interscope is headquartered in Santa Monica, California. The label's best-selling artists include Eminem, U2, and Lady Gaga. 1989-1995 Origins, Early Success, and Joint Ventures In 1989, Ted Field began to build Interscope Records as a division of his film company. Interscope Communications. To run it, he hired John McClain, who had played a central role in Janet Jackson's success at A&M Records, and Tom Wally, who had been the head of A&R at Capitol Records. Separately, Ia Vine, who had produced records by U2, Bruce Springsteen, and John Lennon, among others, was trying to raise money. To start a label, I thought, music is going to change, Ivine said in 1997. Young bands aren't going to be asking for me, but I love working with the new thing. I always liked the part of the business that's the first time you hear something. And I knew I wasn't in that business anymore. Ivine and Field were introduced by Paul McGuinness, then U2's manager. After a series of negotiations led by David Geffan, they came to an agreement, and in 1990, Interscope Records was founded as a joint venture with Atlantic Records. In a 1997 article in Rolling Stone, David Wilde wrote, Interscope's startup coincided with a period of incredible change in the music world. Nirvana had ushered in the alternative revolution. While the major labels were packed, with rosters full of expensive veteran artists who had to redefine themselves for a new rock era, Interscope was in the business of signing new artists, and could as Iovine puts it, move on a dime, based in Westwood, California. Interscope was run by music men. It was a departure from the music industry practices of the 1970s and 1980s when labels traditionally appointed lawyers and promotion executives to senior positions. A founding tenet of the label was that artists would have complete creative control. Interscope's first release was, Rico Suave by Ecuadorian rapper Gerardo in December 1990. The single reached on the Billboard Hot 100 charts in April 1991. Primus's Interscope debut was released in May, followed by Marky Mark and the Funky Bunks music for the people in July. It included the single, Good Vibrations. Two days after first hearing his demo, Wally signed Tupac Shakur, and in November 1991, Interscope released Tupacalypse Now, Shakur's studio debut. Interscope began to develop a significant presence in the alternative genre in 1992. In addition to a second Primus album, the label released No Doubt's self-titled debut, Helmet's Meantime. Four non-blondes bigger, better, faster, more, acquired, and re-release Rocket from the Crypt Circa, now, and, through a joint venture, with TVT, Nothing Records, the Nine Inch Nails EP broke on. 
However, Interscope's success with alternative and rock music was eclipsed by controversy which began in September 1992, when Vice President Dan Quayle called on Interscope to withdraw to Pacalypse Now, stating that it was responsible for the death of a Texas state trooper, who was shot to death in April by a suspect who allegedly was listening to the album on the tape deck of a stolen truck when he was stopped by the officer. The trooper's family filed a civil suit against Shakur and Interscope, claiming the record's violence-laden lyrics incite imminent lawless action. Earlier in 1992, Interscope negotiated a $10 million deal with Dr. Dre and Marion Shug Knight to finance and distribute the label Death Row Records. It was initiated by McLean, who met Dre when he was recording his solo debut, The Chronic. Original plans had called for the album to be released through Sony, but Sony passed on the chronic due to the crazy things going on around Death Row and the contractual status of Dr. Dre. After hearing the album Iovine agreed to put it out, although doing so required a complicated distribution agreement with Priority Records, Dre's label as a member of NWA. The Chronic was released in December 1992. By the end of the following year, The Chronic had sold almost 3 million copies. Snoop Dogg's debut Doggy Style had sold more than 800,000 copies in its first week alone, and Primus and Four Non Blondes had released records which hit the US Top 20. In 1993, with an estimated gross of $90 million, Interscope became profitable ahead of projections. Interscope further established its strength in the alternative and rock genres in 1994. A $2.5 million investment to establish a joint venture with Trauma Records yielded three modern rock tracks and a platinum album. With Bush's 16 Stone, the Nine Inch Nails album The Downward Spiral went to on the US charts and was widely acclaimed. Marilyn Manson's portrait of an American family, the Toadies album Rubberneck and Helmets Betty were commercially successful and critically embraced. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.